So before business, I used to really, really be into fitness. I still am. I still go every day and still work out every day. I do CrossFit probably like two to three times a week. I used to do it every day. Now there's like a mix of bodybuilding and CrossFit, but we have competition next Saturday, so I need to get back into it. The main lift for next week is gonna be a clean, a front squat, shoulder to overhead, and then another front squat, like however heavy you can get to that. So I'm gonna do a little bit of warming up with that today, see what I can get up to. Not gonna max out, just wanna kinda get a feel of where I'll be next week. Not gonna lie, my knee hurts pretty bad. <laughs> uh, my right knee started hurting, so I didn't even finish the last squat. I mean, 225 is not that heavy for me, um, but that junk hurt, hurt my knee. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a lighter workout and do a little bit of a workout, see if it starts to feel a little bit better. But uh, hopefully next week it'll be healed by then and just, that's kind of scary. <laughs> All right, so here's the workout I'm gonna do. Uh, see if my knee will start to feel a little bit better. So three sets, 10 ring muscle ups, 20 strict handstand push ups, 30 GHGs, and 40 wall balls, rest one to one. A little worried about squatting with the wall balls, but hopefully it won't be too bad. Try to take a light on my knee. Uh, good news is, mostly upper body. So yeah, we'll see how this goes and gonna take a light. So here we go. That was trash. Um, done now. Not gonna lie, my knee started hurting a little bit on the GHGs, but. Good news about doing something like this is like, this is the hardest thing you'll do every day. So, helps with work. If I don't work out in the morning, I feel like a bum. Can't focus as much. My energy level's not there. So, it helps tremendously to have some sort of fitness um, done before I get to work. So, I've met a lot of cool people too as well from the gym. Like I've raised private money, uh, did some, actually did some deals with one of them. Places like this do help, other than just like fitness. If you go to a little nicer gym in your area, you'll meet a lot of cool people. So that's fitness for the day. So boom, knee hurts, but we're done. So my office is in the back here and we have an extra room that's not being used now that we're actually gonna turn into a podcast studio. We're putting some stuff up to sound perfect because these rooms are super echoey. So it's pretty big and we're gonna make it, you know, more of a podcast studio. We're gonna put like a desk over here, uh, put like a little separate setup over here get a bunch of cameras, some lighting and all that fun stuff. And this is gonna be like an extra room. So if anyone's in Orlando and they wanna use a podcast studio or a studio of sorts, hit me up in like a month and I got you. So we'll have a spot. We're here in Lake Mary, so on Lake Mary Boulevard. So let me know and uh, yeah, we'll have a spot for that too. All right, so I wanna do a breakdown of the number one lead source we have right now for you know finding our houses, finding our deals. It's Google PPC. All right, so total, I'm just gonna put Google PPC. Total amount that we're spending each month is $20,000. That's our monthly goal, right, that we're spending on Google in and of itself. We do have a management fee because we have third party managing it, but I'm not counting it in the total. Our cost per lead, this is an assumption here in Central Florida, is gonna be around $475. I can abbreviate that CPL. So for every lead, every web form that we get filled out, it's gonna be around $475. That's then under the assumption that across the whole month, right? Some it's gonna be less, some it may be more, but we like to plan for it being a little bit higher just so that our numbers hopefully become better than what we plan for. So from that, you know, if I do $475 cost per lead and $20,000 per month, I should be getting around 42 leads per month. So we're gonna take those 42, we're gonna call those gross leads. And then the next thing we're tracking is how many of those become net leads. So with our numbers that we're looking to hit, 80% are gonna become net leads. A net lead pretty much means that it's not a wholesaler, it's not a duplicate, it's not somebody that's just spamming us, right? It's an actual lead with somebody that wants to sell their house. So 42, 80% of that is gonna be around 33 and some change, right? So that's where that number comes from. So 80% of those is gonna be our net leads. That's what we want to keep track of. Next thing we have is opportunities. So that's gonna be aiming for around 65%. That's what we're looking for. And opportunities defined as somebody that owns the house and they do wanna sell, right? So that we're making an appointment, we wanna go out and see the property, that's what we're gonna consider an opportunity. So 65% of 33 is around 21 and some change, I'm gonna round up to 22. That's gonna be our opportunity, all right? So we wanna make sure that throughout the month, we're averaging these numbers and we're keeping track of that. After the opportunities, right, these are people that we want to set an appointment with. We're aiming to make sure that we keep 90% of our appointments held which pretty much means that out of these 22 people, we wanna make sure that 90% of them, we actually hold them to appointments. So we don't have cancellations, we don't have people that decide like, oh, I don't wanna sell, or something came up, or whatever the case may be. We wanna make sure we actually go to that house. So 90% is around 19 and some change, so I'm gonna round that up and just say that it's 20, all right? So 20 here, 90% appointments held. 
So from that, right, we're gonna be aiming to get 20% of these appointments turn into contracts, 20% contracts. So essentially one out of every five. So from these 20, we should be getting four contracts a month from the PPC budget if we make sure that 90% of those appointments are held. One out of every five offers, which is 20%, turn into a contract. From those contracts, we plan on having an average of $25,000 per, which would round up to around 100, give or take, right? And this is all, this is all rounding, right, guys? So four times 25, if that's per deal, right, is gonna end up being $100,000. And then from this $100,000, the final thing that we're looking for is how many of these actually close. So that's gonna be around $85,000 or 85% close, because when you're wholesaling, when you're flipping, when you're doing anything real estate related, deals are gonna fall out, right? Whether it's title work, whether something comes up with the seller, whatever the case may be, we wanna plan on having 85% close. All right, so over here, I ended up getting $85,000, I spent $20,000. So that's a little bit over a 4X ROI, which is the goal to have as our minimum threshold there. That's our minimum standard with PPC that we wanna hit. Ideally, we'd love to do better. The beautiful thing about tracking all of this, guys, is that when you see, and this is for us specifically, it's like when I know that one of these is off, right? It's like, let's just say the 65% of this 90% is off, I can go and diagnose the problem in the process and really try to fix something specific because it may not be, you know, that it's PPC's fault. It may be my fault. So that's something that's really good to kind of have in a general overview so that we know where to fix the problem specifically. And that's something that we're really trying to work on, make sure that we track all of these numbers really, really, you know, specifically to make sure that we know, hey, if there's a problem, we can go and fix it. So that's been working well for us. And those are the numbers that we try to track to make sure we're getting $4 for every $1 we spend. So today's the last day of January, January 31st. We hit 100K this month. I'm looking at the projections for next month in February. Right now we have one, two, three, four, five deals that are set to close in February. And those are coming out to a total of $100,000. So one of them is 18,000, one's 20,000, one's 32,000, one's 25,000. And then the last one's 5,000. I thought we were gonna lose money in this property. We're actually end up making $5,000. Here's what this one looks like. So yeah, we sold it for $385,000. We bought it for 239, put 80 in it, and we got screwed by a contractor. We bought it too high. We listed it way too high and it just didn't sell for a while. So we're finally selling it. We're gonna end up making a little bit of money, but it could have been worse. I thought we were gonna lose like 20 grand. So that's actually a good thing. So I have one acquisition guy and he's the one that goes out on all of our appointments. He's the one that locks up the deals. You know, we set appointments, he goes out to it. Yesterday, there's one of him and he quit. Now it is back on me to go to these appointments. And this is something, you know, that I haven't done for over six months. Essentially, in order for us to hit our numbers, right, we have to go on eight appointments a week. And that's pretty much more or less two a day. And we go all throughout Central Florida, right? So essentially, my day is now gonna be back spent in the car a lot. And it's just one of those things where, you know, we're ready to ramp up, we're ready for things to get rocking and rolling. And now it's like, okay, pause, you know, take a step back. So it's just a good reminder that like, there's definitely gonna be curveballs always. I can look at this in one of two ways. One, you know, oh my gosh, I have to do all the things that I was doing and now go back into the acquisition role, which is going to require me to be away every day. Or two, I get to be the one that's closing the deals. I get to be the one that's responsible and I know nobody will work them harder than me. And so we'll end up getting more deals and I will find a way to hire somebody and train them and it will all work out. And it's super easy to catch yourself saying like, oh my gosh, you know, I spent a year training this guy, like I gave him everything, like, oh my gosh, how dare he leave? But it's like, no, I wish him the absolute best. Because of that, I got much better as a leader. Still not near good enough, but I learned a ton myself. So the next person that I hire, I will have a thousand times better systems and processes, and the onboarding will be better, and the culture will be better, and it will just be a 10 times smoother of a process. So I wish him nothing but the absolute best, and we are still going to crush it. So. Yeah, now I'm gonna go on some appointments. I have two today in Deltona. And that's like, you know, 30 minutes away. Then I gotta come back to the office and then go to one later tonight. It's part of it, man. It's part of it. These are the freaking trenches.